Philip Morris, king size or regular, America's finest cigarette, presents... Racket Squad. What you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the official files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources. It is presented as a public service by Philip Morris, a company whose product deserves your support and patronage. I smoke Philip Morris myself. I have for a long time, because I know the Philip Morris manufacturing process. And I'm convinced that this cigarette is as fine as human care and scientific skill can make it. It's truly a fine, superior cigarette. I recommend it for your pleasure. The case I'm going to tell you about tonight takes place in New York City at a small but long-established bank toward the lower end of Manhattan Island. Yes? I, I'm looking for a position, sir. I'm an accountant. John Williams. I uh, don't think we have anything at the moment, uh, Mr. Williams. Sorry. I'd make a good teller, sir. Fast, accurate. I don't mind long hours. I can get along on very little... Why won't you give me a job? I can figure circles around anybody working here with my eyes blindfolded. I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. Uh, perhaps you came back, say, uh, after the first of the year. Oh, Mr. Vermillion, good morning. Good morning. That's tough. You know him? No, but I hate to see a man begging for a job, that's all. It's real tough. In a way. I always heard you bankers had hard hearts. A reputation that's undeserved. There's good reason for turning him down. Is that so? I couldn't put him on. He served five years in Sing Sing for his part in one of the biggest embezzlements I can remember. The Havenstrite Manufacturing Company scandal. You remember? Havenstrite? Had something to do with juggling the books, didn't it? The most expert juggling and accounting history, my auditors say. And that man did it? The man who was just in here? That's the man. <laughs> Pity the way some men of genius waste their talents. Weak moment, brilliant career, gone to smash. What'd you say his name was again? Williams? That's the name he's using now. His uh, right name is Martin Kelso. Here's his card. He was in here six months ago and left it with me. The poor fellow. Guess he didn't remember calling here before. That's the way you get after a while. Do you mind if I take this with me? You're not thinking of giving him a job. Oh, I might be able to help him. I could help him up the ladder if he wanted another chance. That's all, Mr. Well, that's very commendable. Sorry I can't do anything for him here. But our bonding company wouldn't let us hire him. You understand? Oh, yes, of course. Now, is there something you wanted to see me about, Mr. Vermillion? Oh, nothing in particular. I just came in to cash a check to see that everything was running smoothly. Oh, just fine, sir. Well, I'll see you again, Mr. Blaine. Goodbye. Any time. You Martin Kelso? Yes. My name is George Vermillion. I'd like to talk to you. What about? I think I can help you. May I come in? Well, what's this about? Well, you might at least offer me a chair. I was at the bank this morning, Kelso, when you asked for a job. Well? How would you like to get back on your feet? It's your own line of work. You at the bank, you know what chance I've got. What's on your mind? You're pretty good at juggling financial records, my friend. The Havenstrite affair, I mean. Oh, I see. No thanks, Mr. Vermillion. I made a mistake and I paid for it. Five years, now we're square. You're kidding yourself, mister. You're not square. You'll be paying for it for the rest of your life. Maybe. Maybe you're right. We'll see. Well, what are you going to do? Go through your life trying to get a job under an assumed name? Suppose you get one. What's the bonding company going to do when they find out your name is really Martin Kelso? Of course, you could get another kind of job, one that doesn't need bonding. Like washing dishes. Digging in the streets. How long is it since you've had a decent meal, Kelso? 
I... I honestly don't know. Sounds like I'm exaggerating, but... I don't know. When do you think you're going to get one? <laughs> That's a good question, too. I don't want any charity, thanks. It isn't charity. It's just a payment on your earnings. Five hundred bucks. A drop in the bucket of what you can make. Yeah. Wind up in jail again. Kelso, do I look like the kind of a man who plays short odds? We've been moving around a lot in our little game. There's no chance of anything going wrong. What's the racket? Please, Mr. Kelso, you get your coat and come with me. You better get yourself some decent clothes. Have you got a good-looking suitcase? Yeah, I got one, but it's pretty sharp. Well, get a new one. It's expensive. Where are we going? Well, I'm going first. To a little New England town called Dollarsburg, whimsically enough. I'll send for you later when I want you. You ready? All set. Are you sure this is the best you have? Oh, the very best in Dollarsburg, Mr. Vermillion, I assure you. Well, I'll take it. Do you have a monthly rate? Oh, yes, we do. Uh, by the month, it well, will I'll be... take it, whatever it is. Oh, yes, sir. I'm very happy you'll be with us for a while, sir. I'm hoping to settle down here for your trouble. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything else I can do for you, sir? Well, yes, there is. I'd like to find a bank. I want to open an account. Oh, the Bank of Dollarsburg, sir. Across the street on the corner. Uh, anything else I can do for you, sir? Uh, just pick up the phone. Thank you. I'll remember that. Across the street, on the corner. Uh, the bank, sir. Uh, you can't miss it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to open a new account. Either one of the tellers will help you. Well, if I may, I'd like to see the president of the bank. My name is George Vermillion from New York. Well, I'm afraid he's rather busy right now. I'd appreciate it if he'd give me a few moments of his time. I'd like to deposit a rather large amount of money. Well, in that case, come with me. Thank you. Come in. Mr. Medford, a gentleman to see you, sir. A new depositor, Mr. Vermillion from New York. Well, come right in, Mr. Vermillion. Medford's the name. Happy to know you. Thank you. Won't you have a chair? Thanks, Mr. Medford. From New York, eh? Well, I hope you don't find our little town too dull, Mr. Vermillion. Well, quite the contrary. I'm rather fed up with the business world of New York. A place like this where a man can relax and breathe the good, fresh country air. I'm glad to hear you say that, Mr. Vermillion. I feel the same way about it, of course. Well, it's the only way. I've made all the money I need. Now I'm going to relax and enjoy it. Ah, wonderful word. And since I'm going to settle down here, I thought perhaps I'd better open a bank account. That'll do for a start until I have my funds transferred from New York. Your account will be opened immediately, Mr. Vermillion. I certainly hope you enjoy your life of idle bliss. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't want to be entirely idle, Mr. Medford. That's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you. I think a man should have his finger on the opportunities in a town like this. Now, if I could find a good business... You came to the right place. Just a minute. Now, uh, here's a list of a half a dozen business opportunities. Any one of them should be a sound investment, I should think. Coal and wood. Candy store. Lumber company. Oh, you know, I think I'd rather have something interesting, something with a little more uh, dignity. You know what I mean. Well, uh, how about this one? Sterner Pottery Company. They have a beautiful line, all hand-painted stuff. You've heard of Sterner Ware, I'm sure. Oh, yes, it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, tell me about this Sterner Pottery, Mr. Medford. Well, Harry Sterner opened up uh, about 1918, right after he came over from Europe. Money. At home. Hello, Papa. How did it go today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you, Bunny. Do you know what day this is, the Bunny? What? This is the anniversary. Thirty years since I started the factory. And you're a big success. Yes, big success. Do you know what I did this morning to celebrate? 
bought yourself a new suit. Oh, no. This one has been good for ten years. That's going to be good for another ten. No, I stopped in at the bank. What for, Papa? I told Mr. Medford, if he can find a buyer for the place, I will sell. Papa, I thought you said you never wanted to retire. Yes, I said that, but a man can change his mind, just like a woman, can't he? When did you decide this, Papa? Oh, I didn't decide it. It just came on me like going old comes on a man. Oh, Papa, you're not old. No, but just the same. I think I've worked enough. Don't you agree? Yes, of course. I just thought you'd never give up a business you built with your own hands. But what did I build for, honey? But for the time to retire and to enjoy for what I've worked. You've earned a good rest. Time to do all the things you've always wanted to do. Paint, fish, take pictures. Papa, would the place bring enough to last us? You've got a lot of years to go yet, you know. It will bring enough. Papa, you don't really know, do you? Oh, Bonnie, you know me. I'm no businessman. Figures make me dizzy. I'm an artist. The place will bring what it is worth. And that will be enough for your security. And for mine. I'll get it, Papa. You sit right there. Hello? Oh, Mr. Medford. Oh, that's for me, Bonnie. Yes, Mr. Medford. He's right here. Hello, Mr. Medford. You have news for me? This is Harry Stoner speaking, yes? Somebody to... Buy my place? Uh, yes. Yes, he can see you tomorrow. Oh, fine. Fine. See you then. Thank you. Mr. Medford already has a man to buy my place. A rich man from New York. Tomorrow he will see it. Oh, Papa, let's wait and see. Maybe the man won't even like the place. No, no, he will buy it. This is just the kind of business he's looking for. Mr. Medford told me. How did you like it, Mr. Vermillion? It has a certain air of dignity. It seems to be a going concern. Only high-class merchandise we manufacture. Every piece designed by Harry Sterling. Well, the price was right. Well, for cash, I would let you have it at a very good price. Let's say, uh, uh, a very good price. I'll have my bookkeeper go over the books, and then... Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to have my own auditor go over the books. You understand. Oh, of course I understand. You have to protect yourself. That's only proper. I told you Mr. Sturger wouldn't give us any trouble. Did you have anyone in particular in mind, or could I have one of my bank auditors draw up a report for you? No, I think I'd like to have my own man come down from New York. He's been handling my affairs for years, one of the top auditors of the country. Sterner Pottery Company. What's that name again, please? Hmm. Just a minute. Long distance. New York for a Mr. Uh, Vermillion. Oh, this is Mr. Vermillion, right here. Thanks. Now, shh, everybody. Long distance. Hello, George Vermillion speaking. Hello, George. Martin. How's everything going? Oh, Caswell. Well, it's good to hear your voice. My New York attorney. How in the world did you know I was out here? Oh, yes, I do remember leaving word at the hotel. Did you ever close that deal on the Trans-Western Railroad? It was a cinch. They wanted to hand us the whole railroad in a silver platter, but I said, no, keep your old train. Ready for me yet? Oh, fine, fine. That means I get the whole $400,000 in cash. And that liquidates all my holdings. Well, good enough. I'll have that money out here in this bank in a couple of weeks. Well, there's no rush. <laughs> okay, they ought to be properly impressed by now. When do you want me? Uh, there's one thing more, Caswell. Uh, I'm thinking of going in business out here. Oh, yes, just a little something to keep me occupied. I want John Williams to come down and run a report on the assets of the business. Do you think you can locate him for me? Well, wait just a minute. Will tomorrow be all right, Mr. Sterner? I don't want to rush you, but Mr. Williams is a very busy man. Oh, yes, of course. Tomorrow is all right. Uh -huh. Hello, Caswell. 
Tomorrow's all right. Okay. Goodbye. Give my regards to Mrs. Caswell. Goodbye. John Morney Williams, the top man in his field. He's just finished auditing the books of the Bowling Steamship Company. Next week he goes to Washington for a big consultation with the Department of the Interior on a big electrical project. Oh, well, that's important work for the government. Now I'm sure we'll have an accurate report on Sterner Pottery, eh? Accurate. When that man gives a report, you can swear on it just like you would on the Bible. Hi. I've just been playing some great hit songs of the past. You know, it's an exciting thing to watch the way a new song becomes a hit song. The way it catches on and grows in ever-increasing popularity. And I'll tell you something. That's just the way I feel about another big popular hit I've got right here. The wonderful new Philip Morris King Size. From the very first day it was introduced, this great new King Size cigarette has been going up and up and up in the nation's favor. What is it exactly that makes this one cigarette, this new king-size Philip Morris, the most outstanding success in cigarette history? It's very simple. It's got quality, a special quality of throat comfort, a gentleness, a deep, full, rich flavor you just won't find in any other brand. That quality of gentleness is something you feel right here. Yes, your throat can tell that this one this new king-size Philip Morris really tops them all for all the good things you want in a cigarette. I hope you try them. I know you like them. Because if it's Philip Morris, king-size or regular, it's America's finest cigarette. You finished, Mr. Williams? Well, what do you say? Mr. Sterner, could I see you at your home tonight? Tonight? Is there anything wrong, Mr. Williams? The company's in good condition, isn't it? Well, I'd rather talk to you about it tonight. Would 8 o'clock be all right? Why, yes. 8 o'clock is all right. You know, I put on six pounds since I met you. Oh, you better watch your weight, Marty. You have to keep trim, professional-like. Mm -hmm. It's 7.30. Do you want to start over to Sterner with that report? Uh-huh. Funny thing. What? You know, that business is in real good shape. I wouldn't mind buying it myself. But to settle down in a town like this, go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning and work for 10 hours a day? Bah, oh, Marty. What's wrong with that if it's your own? Ah, you're a sentimentalist. Wait until you get the taste of real money. Made the easy way. I had a taste of it. And if you hadn't met me, you'd have tasted dirt in your mouth. Don't forget that, Marty. That's why I'm going over to see Mr. Harry Sterner right now. Don't forget that, Georgie, my boy. Keep a candle burning in the window for me. Sure you know how to handle that chump? Don't worry. I know how to handle him. Well, that's the picture, Mr. Sterner. I'm afraid I couldn't possibly advise anyone to buy your company, the shape it's in. Are you sure, Mr. Williams? Oh, figures don't lie. Here you are, Papa. Mr. Williams, nice and gold. You'll have to drink it from a stein. Papa thinks it's sacrilegious to put beer in anything else. What's the matter, Papa? Are you all right? Not so good, darling. I was just telling your father I couldn't possibly advise my client to buy his business the shape it's in. Just a bunch of debts and liabilities. But how's that possible? Everything's been going so well. To someone untrained in financial matters like your father, perhaps. But my report said otherwise, I'm sorry to say. See for yourself. I don't understand these things very well, Mr. Williams. And I don't understand how Father could possibly let the business go down so badly. He should have employed an accountant to help him with the financial end. Your father isn't very much of a businessman, I'm afraid. I know, but he had Mr. Closser. Mr. Closser? He keeps my books ever since I opened the shop. You saw him in the office. Oh, yes. You mean that bookkeeper? Yes. Well, I'm afraid I must be running along now. You know, if I were you, Mr. Sterner, I'd get myself a good lawyer. The best I could afford. A lawyer? What do I need a lawyer for, Mr. Williams? In case your creditors throw you into bankruptcy or try to throw you into jail. Jail? What for? Don't you know? For trying to dispose of property without regard to the rights of creditors. That's what the law calls malum prohibitum. It's almost an open and shut case. I did not mean to cheat anybody, Mr. Williams. Honestly. 
I did not want to do anything like this. Oh, I know that. But it might be difficult to prove in court. Oh, Papa. Seems a shame. Harry Turner, an honest man, a good man in trouble. And George Vermillion, a cheap, conniving, sharper, riding high. Doesn't seem right. I don't understand what you mean, Mr. Williams. He was going to put the squeeze on you. Force you to sell out for a quarter what the business is worth. He's got all kinds of ways. I'd like to show him just once. You mean he was going to cheat me? I don't believe that. Oh, he does it every time. I wish I could think of a way I could get back at him and help you out of this mess you're in at the same time. You have an idea? Look, Mr. Sterner, if you could pay me for my time, I could fix up the financial report on your business that would make the million grab the company at a big fat price. It would mean a lot of work for me, but I'd be willing to do it. You would be willing? That isn't right, Papa. Wait, Bonnie. Mr. Williams, what would you charge me? No, Papa, I won't let you. Please, Bonnie. Mr. Williams, how much do you figure for your time? I'll tell you what. I'll do it for you for $5,000. $5,000? Young lady, do you know how much I get for drawing a financial report? Besides, consider your father be getting a small fortune for a business that's worth about one plug nickel. No, I won't let you, Papa. You heard what Mr. Williams said about going to jail. When Mr. Vermillion finds out, he'd go straight to the police. With what proof? I'm his financial advisor, remember? Shortly after the deal is closed, the uh, report will be strangely missing. He won't be able to complain about a thing. Bonnie, Mr. Williams would not tell us wrong. He is a big accountant, working for the big steamship companies. I don't like it, but I can't argue with you. There is nothing to argue, Bonnie. You make that report, Mr. Williams, and I'll give you a check. Uh, Bonnie, the checkbook, please. Can I make a check for $5,000? Do I have enough money? Yes, uh, make it out to cash, so it can't be traced to me. Of course. And this is very kind of you, Mr. Williams. Big, important men like you help out small businessmen in trouble. You are very kind. It's nothing I wouldn't do for any small businessman, Mr. Sterner. $5,000. Pretty good for a start, eh, Martin? Yep, I told him you were a sharp operator. You know, I felt kind of sorry for that old fellow. Well, he can afford the five grand, you know that. Yeah, I suppose so. What are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? Get started in that report. boy, Marty, old boy, you earn your half with this pretty little piece of paper, you dog. Say, this is an excellent report. Mr. Sterner has a prosperous little business, all right. Worth a good deal more than I ever suspected. Much more than one could tell from a cursory examination of the premises, Mr. Medford. And he'll sell it to me for how much? 200,000 cash. 200,000 is worth 275. I'd grab it right away if I were you. Are you kidding? I'm going to nail it down this afternoon. Will you have the cashier draw up a check for the amount of money I deposited with the bank? For the full amount that you deposited? Yes, the full amount. I want to be sure he doesn't change his mind. I see what you mean, uh... Miss Earl. Yes? On the Vermilion account, have a cashier check made out for the full amount right away, will you? Right away, sir. Thank you, Mr. Medford. So, John, how long will it take you to draw up the papers? Well, I'll see Caswell first thing in the morning and get him started. Should be ready by, uh, oh, the middle of next week. Well, that's fine. Now, don't you think you'd better get back to the hotel, start to pack if you're going to catch that afternoon train? I'll make it. Could you drive me to the station, George? Oh, sure. It's on the way to Sterner's anyway. Thank you, Mr. Medford. Thank you for everything. Oh, I'll think nothing of it. It's business for my organization. Yeah, there'll be plenty more when I have my funds transferred out here, and I really get going. Glad to have met you, Mr. Williams. Someday I hope you'll find time to work on the books of my bank. Thank you. You never can tell, Mr. Medford. You try now. I'll remind him of it. I have your check ready for you, sir. Is that the correct amount? Yes, that's correct. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. We'll always be happy to serve you, Mr. Familion. Thank you very much. Are you still crying about that crockery maker? Big round tears. For 2500 apiece, we can both weep a little. boy, Marty, old boy. Where do we go next? A little town in Maine. Hurry it up, son. I've got to find me a business to get into. Hurry it up yourself. There's a train you've got to get into first.
That's the racket George Vermillion and Martin Kelso worked on unsuspecting small-town businessmen for almost two years. It didn't take much of their time, just a few days in most places, not more than a few weeks in others. They made themselves a small fortune, collecting as high as $10,000 in some cases. In fact, they did so well that eventually they worked themselves up into the really big numbers. That was the end of the trail for a couple of smart racketeers who found out they weren't quite smart enough to beat the law. Vermillion and Kelso are still doing time for grand larceny, but there might be other men working the same swindle. So be careful. It could happen to you. Now I'd like to show you a few scenes from next week's case. There's a girl in this dressing room, pretty, young, and if I may say so, a little foolish. Excuse me. This is a great cigarette. The new king-size Philip Morris. By the way, have you tried them yet? If you haven't, believe me, you're missing the finest cigarette made in America today. They not only smoke good, but they're good to the smoker. Because this new Philip Morris King size has a special quality of gentleness, a deep, full, rich flavor that you just won't find in any other brand. Try them on my recommendation. And just remember, if it's Philip Morris, King size or regular, it's America's finest cigarette. Oh yes, that girl. Well, she doesn't know it, but she's about to fall for one of the oldest and most vicious confidence games. A swindle that preys upon the vanity and susceptibility of pretty girls. Uh, I don't know what to say. I came in here just to have my picture taken, and now... You're on your way to becoming a famous model. Gunner, tuck in your eyes and say hello to Franny Dillon. <laughs> Hi. Her fiancé is a buddy of yours, so be careful. Well, any fiancé of my buddies is a fiancé of mine. <laughs> Put her there. We'll be out of here in five minutes. You can take a nice warm bath and collapse. Oh, oh, I wish I could. Got a television show to do. I'd given you almost $700, Miss Wade. $700? Young lady. I took you out of a hamburger stand. I took a gawky, clumsy young You ox. took her, period. Now she wants out. What about it? Fine. You'll see it all next week when Philip Morris presents Beauty for Hire, another case of fraud taken from the files of Racket Squad. Thursday night when Philip Morris presents My Little Margie, starring Gail Storm and Charles Farrell over most of these same stations. For delayed telecasts, see your local television listings for time and stations.